I have something to discuss with you today that I don't think gets talked about very much. What do you do when you have made this quilt and you're about to put it into the hands of somebody who does not know how to take care of it? Hi, I'm Kristen with icstarsquilting.com. I have a website where I share tips, tricks, and tutorials for the modern quilter. How do you take care of a quilt? Let's talk about that for a second. So you have picked out the fabrics. Even before you picked out the fabrics, you probably sat and you looked through like a hundred different patterns and things that you could do and you're trying to decide, is this at my skill level, above my skill level, below my skill level, can I really pull this off? Um, you know, the typical thought process of every quilter. Am I gonna be able to finish this? You made it through picking out fabrics. You even made it through cutting all of the fabric, sewing all of the fabric, quilting all of the fabric, um, probably picking out some seams and doing it again because, you know, there are learning mistakes that we all go through. And now you are finished this quilt, you've bound it, you have learned new things along the way, you have little pricks and sticks on your fingers from accidental pen pokes or needle pokes or whatever you've got going on. You've spent time on YouTube looking at how to do things and the quilt is done, right? And now you're fixing to put this beautiful quilt in the hands of somebody who doesn't know how to take care of it. You want to make sure that this quilt lives at least as long as you do, right? So it's important to me when I gift a quilt that I kind of set those intentions up at the very front, you know. With every single one of my quilts, I have four things that I do, okay? One. I always, always, always put a quilt label on my quilt, okay? The quilt label will have my name, or sometimes I have some that have my website on it, something that ties the quilt back to me, okay? It's like an artist signature on a painting or a watermark on a photo that you took. It ties that piece of art back to you. Always put a quilt label. If it's for somebody really, really special in your life, add a quilt label with their name, okay? Everybody loves personalized things. Add a quilt label with their name that has your name on it too, and perhaps, um, I don't know, the, the birth date of the baby that was born or the year that the couple were married. Add something personal to it because the way that you have made this quilt, you have made so many personalized decisions along the way that the couple or the recipient may not really understand. They're never gonna see that the reason that you chose those colors was because of this memory that you had with them. Or, you know, we could go, we could go all around this all day long on how you got to the finished quilt product itself. And that's what I'm going to hit on next. Number two. I always, always, always add a quilt history form with the quilts when I give them. This is your opportunity to tell them why you did what you did. Okay, why you chose these colors, why you chose this pattern, why every single little decision was made by you. It's a nice sentiment. When they pull out the quilt and they read the reasons why you did it, it makes it so much more personal. It's not just you traipsing through the fabric store, picking out random pieces of fabric, sewing them together, and voila! It's easy, it's done. No, you had 100,000 tiny little decisions that led to the finished part of this quilt, and I think that it is wonderful to share that. That goes along with the quilt care sheet, okay? That is a flow chart that I have made that you can easily personalize to your specific recommendations on this quilt, but it gives the recipient a way to know how to take care of this quilt. This is not a blanket from Target or, you know, some little cheapy fleece throw that we bought at Ikea, okay? This is a quilt, it's handmade, it's beautiful, it's valuable. You want to equip somebody with the tools to know how to take care of it. Number three, is a gift tag. Now I include these with every gift that I give to because I think it injects a little bit more of my personality into the gift itself. It's also a really good icebreaker for people who perhaps you love but may not know how much work you've put into this quilt. Um, you could do a personalized card. It doesn't have to be a gift tag. It could be a personalized card. It could be um, you know, just something that says from me to you. 
I always include a gift tag and I've made some really, I think, hilarious ones that I'm happy to share with you. Again, check the links below. Everything in this video will be down there. The gift tags are a free download. Um, I deemed them as kind of sassy gift tags because they're just kind of, um, they're just kind of funny, okay? There's really nothing else to it but that. They're just kind of funny. They're little icebreakers. I always include one when I gift a quilt. The fourth thing that I do when I gift a quilt is I never miss an opportunity to take photos of my quilts before I gift them. Don't skip that step. It doesn't matter if what you see is full of flaws. It doesn't matter if you think that you could do better. It doesn't matter if the weather is bad and you are waiting for a better day or you think that you'll get it later on. Always, always, always take photos of your quilts because I guarantee you, even if you're just starting out and you think I may make four or five quilts in my lifetime, um, this hobby can grow really, really fast and pretty soon, you know, years and years will pass by and you won't remember those other quilts that you've made, okay? It's so easy right now. Pull out your cell phone, take your quilt with you in the backyard, throw it over the side of the fence where you can get a nice beautiful view of it with the clouds coming through the sky. Go pay like your neighbor or something to like hold it up so you can take a picture of the full quilt. You need to take pictures of your quilts because that is the way for you to remember them, okay? You're gonna see quilts that you did years and years and years ago, and you're gonna go, oh my God, I can't believe I was proud of that. <laughs> oh my God, I have, um, I have improved a lot, you know, over the years. I have improved a lot, and, and you'll be so glad that you took those pictures, especially, and you know, sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes our beautiful, gorgeous quilts end up as cat beds, and, um, that's just part of the trade. Hopefully somebody doesn't do that to you, but it happens. But you will be so glad that you took pictures of those quilts when you did, because it's a treasure for you to keep, and you will love looking at those pictures later on, even if it's just to see how far that you have come. And that's that. If you have any questions or any other comments or thoughts on things that you do when you gift a quilt, I would love to hear them. Go ahead and put them in the comments down below. I'm Kristen with IcyStarsQuilting.com. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below for more tips, tricks, and tutorials for the modern quilter. I look forward to talking with you soon. Bye.